Daddy? Yeah? Hey, um, so basically, um, BBC Three want you to look a little bit less like um, Penfold from Danger Mouse. You know the way we've got Danny Dyer on the show later? Well, I don't know whoever he is. Yeah, OK. Basically, I thought you could dress a little bit more geezery so that he feels at home. So how do you feel about wearing that? There is no way that I'm going to wear a tracksuit. <sighs> look like that awful this oh, job. Yeah, OK, man. wouldn't it? No, don't go there. Um, what about these trainers? No. No way I'm going to meet Jeremy Paxman looking like a drug dealer. All right, OK, hear me out. We could try something a, a lot more discreet, mm -hmm. but honestly, I think you'd look really good um, with an earring. Just a little... What about a nipple? chat show for BBC Three. On tonight's show, finally, after years of people wanting to see them team up, Jeremy Paxman and Danny Dyer are going to be together at last on that very sofa. <laughs> Before the show, uh, Danny was actually teaching me a little bit of Cockney rhyming slang. Phrases such as, shut up, you lanky prick. <laughs> I still haven't worked out what it's slang for, but I'm certain it's lovely. <laughs> We're also going to be talking to Jeremy Paxman. My favourite thing about Jeremy Paxman is the theatre of his interviews. We've all seen it, right? He's grilling some politician and he lets them waffle on until their pants are filled to the brim with bullshit. He reaches into his jacket pocket and he withdraws his weapon of choice, the spectacles. <laughs> and when he takes those out, what he's saying to that politician is, up until now, your face is so offensive to me, I can't even look at you in focus. <laughs> But I've got a quote written down here, a quote of yours from seven years ago. You probably don't even remember saying it, but Jeremy does. <laughs> so be a good boy, pull down your trousers and pants and bend over that barrel for me and prepare to take this like a man. <laughs> but this is the master stroke, right? He doesn't just put the glasses on and leave them there. No, we get the trademark Paxman flourish, the swoosh of the matador's cape. Just before making the execution, he whips them back off again. This is how it plays. He's like, Minister, you're here supporting the closure of 15 hospitals. But in 2006, you said that under no circumstances would you support cuts to the NHS. <laughs> What's changed? Before we chat to our guests, um, I need to, of course, bring out my co-host, my 75-year-old gout-ridden father, Michael. <laughs> uh, I feel duty-bound to warn you about him. Um, the modern world kind of baffles him. Uh, I'm talking about the kind of man here who, when I took him to a KFC restaurant for the first time two years ago, asked to see the wine list. <laughs> so you have been warned. Anyway, let's bring him out. You know the way people say, he's not just my dad, he's also my best friend. Well, please welcome my dad, Michael Whitehall. Sorry, sorry about the steps, by the way. The BBC Three budget couldn't stretch to a stair lift, but we <laughs> spend it all on your chair. I'm hey, not our first... seven... sorry. I'm, I'm not the show. seventy-five. What are you talking? I about? don't have gals. If I had gals, I wouldn't wear elegant <laughs> shoes. Yeah, like I know. This. I'm seventy-three. Please, just let okay? me. Can I get on with the show? Seventy-three. Yes. Oh, wait, seventy-three. <laughs> Let me just have a word about restaurants. What is? Too. Why are you reading really? this? <laughs> Because Why? I've been making notes You've behind been there. Notes. You've been talking. <laughs> no, I need to please. I need to bring out our, our guests. The so KFC our first get... restaurant. Oh my God. <laughs> said, right? And you just can't yes. comprehend that a fast food restaurant. That is a restaurant. It's like you're the man that when you went to McDonald's with me, yes. and you, you ordered a Big Mac, and you yes. asked the woman behind the till to have it cooked medium rare, and that is true. <laughs> you did. You did do that. I did not. Yes, you did. I did not. You did. No. 
I asked for it rare. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't come back yet. And here, let's... Anyway. Why don't you do the intro to Jeremy Paxman? Why do you keep pointing over because there? Because there's an auto cue over there and you can read it off and it can be the start of the oh, show. Well, it says back chat. No, that's, no, that's, that's thing over there. That's not there. Not that. That. You do Jeremy's intro. You don't seriously think that I would start reading from that. I can't even <laughs> see it. Oh, can, you, oh, can we move it in closer so he can read it? <laughs> Just say when you can read it. No, keep going. Are you literally joking? Are you... Right, stop. There. Perfect. Michael. No. Our first... <laughs> no. What? Michael, that's... That Michael is your name. That's just to let you know that that's your bit of... Sp just no, fine. Okay. read the bit after Michael. Right. Our first guest tonight is a man who needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyway. He's the... Just, it's going far too far. He's the bearded man. Wait, OK, sorry, can the, ridiculous. can the auto cue just... Could you spool it a little bit um, slower so that he can read, cos he can't keep up because you're going too far? Sorry. Well, nobody could do it that quickly. <laughs> Why didn't you get somebody... I mean, your mother? My mother... Hillary. The auto Hillary cue could have done that properly. No, she couldn't, cos my mother is not it's a professional a auto show. cue what? operator. No, but you she could have done You need a professional auto cue operator You to know do your auto... mother, she's got very strong wrists. She would have been <laughs> very <laughs> good. She would have been very good at operating that. I don't want to hear about my mother's wrists. <laughs> I seriously, just read it and let's bring him out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sir Jeremy Paxman. He's not a sir. He, to me, he will always oh, be. Please sir. welcome Jeremy Paxman. <laughs> So this is the uh, problem son you've told me about so many times. <laughs> Jeremy, please be nice to me. I'm very nervous. It's my first ever interview and you're my interviewee. And I'm really worried, so please will you be gentle with me? Of course. You, you were quite harsh with Russell Brand. I wasn't harsh with... <laughs> Jeremy, did already! Did you see it? <laughs> yeah, I did. You Why did you say it was harsh? Because you called him trivial. Well, that was after he suggested I knitted my beard into my armpit hair. <laughs> But will, you, will you not call me trivial this evening, please? Well, it depends what you say. You can, you can earn the title of not being called trivial. Question number one. <laughs> Who's your favourite member of One Direction? <laughs> it's a ludicrous question to ask, Jeremy. I know Never it's a silly question. Can you ask it proper questions yes. now? Were you surprised at how much interest people had in that clip? Was I surprised? No, I wasn't. I think he had... You know, the, the interesting thing about that Russell Brand business is he is right about something. He's definitely put his finger on the fact that there are vast numbers of people who are really turned off by the way that politics operates in this country, and that's right. I think his prescription is wrong. Yeah. But I think he's absolutely right in, in, in anatomising something that is really going on in society. People are disenchanted. One of the things you seem to get a little bit irked by was that Russell Brand um, was saying that he, he didn't vote. Um, yet, in an interview with the Radio Times, <laughs> you said, in one recent election, I decided not to vote because I thought the choice was so unappetising. <laughs> What's changed? Why don't you give the rest of the quote? Well, that's the only bit that I had from the quote. Isn't <laughs> 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 that what you're meant to do? To take it. I tell you what I think. I think if you can't be bothered to vote, you absolutely disqualify yourself from passing any comment at all on what's happening in society at large, in the government, in the statements of politicians. It's a very minimal effort to go down to a polling station. Sorry to interrupt you, but you 
wasted your vote last time. I didn't waste you my did, vote. You, you voted, voted for green. Me. You tried to <laughs> that is a waste of a vote. You tried to he tried to steal my postal vote and not. force me to vote Tory and I refused to let you do it. You <laughs> said to me, do you mind doing it for me no, and I I'll vote conservative? I did not. And then you changed your mind afterwards and said, oh now I'm Lib Dem or what? Greens <laughs> and all that rubbish. Because you like to your fan base to appear to be sort of slightly socialisty kind of greeny. Socialisty greeny. greeny. What the hell are Whereas you you're about? a good old fashioned Tory. I'm like not! <laughs> Stop outing me as a Tory! Sorry, I interrupted your conversation. Um, I want to ask you about University Challenge. I, I would love to be on University Challenge. Well, why? You were in a university for, what, two terms? And then you <laughs> dropped out. You got a very good place at Manchester University, Jeremy, reading History of Art. Two terms later, he's out, touring pubs round the north of England, telling jokes about his penis. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> and that's what he's done ever since. You get some really stupid answers on the University Challenge. This is one of my favourites. Another starter question. The nicknames Cheesemongers, Cherry Pickers, Bob's Own, The Emperor's Chambermaids and The Immortals are or have been used for which groups of men? You're Miss Bright. Homosexuals? No. <laughs> Balliol Clark. Composers? No, they're regiments in the British Army. <laughs> I belong to a heretical minority that rather likes students. Yeah. And I like the fact that they give the lie, they know amazing things. But they, give a ver they cast students in a very positive light. I mean, the vast majority of students well, would you be... You speak as someone who didn't even manage to complete a course. <laughs> <laughs> it is literally like having two of my dads here. <laughs> now, your list of gripes challenges even my, uh, my father's. Your list of gripes includes... Strictly Come Dancing, uh, it's Social... It's not a gripe, I just wouldn't do it. That doesn't mean I don't like it. I just think it's a fantastically produced show. Big Brother? <laughs> social media. Um... I don't have a gripe about... So... What is... Where are you getting all this tripe <laughs> from? It's all from your Wikipedia page. <laughs> Probably written by you. <laughs> or someone even less educated. <laughs> <Don't worry! laughs> You're very good. You no, were no, right. <laughs> M&S underpants. You did yes. have a, a gripe with, with that. I did. I was putting my underpants on in the gym one day and I observed they had a hole in them. I then remarked to the other blokes in the changing room, have you any, any of you noticed Marks and Sparks pants having holes in them? Several of them had. What I hadn't reckoned on, of course, was I think the pants were probably rather old. <laughs> <laughs> Do you... I, See, I, I, I should be clearly a sell-by or use-by date on your pants, shouldn't there? And then you'd know how old they were. But well, the problem I have Thank is with the elastic. Because I'm very, um... Lithe? No, I was going to say... I shouldn't use this in front of you, but I'm, I'm quite well hung. What the fuck?! Um, <laughs> um, I, ne I need... I need very strong elasticity, is it called? In an underpant. <laughs> and once it starts loosening up, yeah. all hell is basically <laughs> let loose. And of course, Jack has inherited, I mean, some very good things from me, and that is one of. We can stop now. <laughs> <laughs> we can stop now. We've done enough of that. You're actually yeah. being very trivial, so we're going to move on. <laughs> okay. um, Jeremy, uh, your book, um, which you have written um, about the Great War. Yes. People have written about the Great War before. What makes your book different? Now, come on, that was a fucking good question. <laughs> what makes it... Well, I mean, look, we come from a generation that's accustomed to... All of us in this room uh, is accustomed to pleasing ourselves, and I think it's really hard to understand how it was that so many people were, were seduced into this war in 1914, 1915, and they kept faith with it right through to 1918. And, and what I wanted to try to understand was was why. What was, the, what was the first person experience of this war? 
Well, my father, um, you very much enjoyed the book. Um, I it did, brought back a lot of, brought mm -hmm. back a lot of memories for you as an eyewitness of, this, <laughs> of the Great War. It's a really good book, and I well, enjoyed it kind. enormously. As we're talking about books, um, Jack and I have written a book. You can't plug our book. You can't plug I've our book. We're what? on the BBC. You can't plug the book. I'm not plugging it. I'm just introducing it to the audience <laughs> and to Jeremy, because I have a copy here for him. The book's called Him and Me. Half the chapters are written by Jack and the other half are written by me. Now, I know that Jeremy is not going to be interested in reading stuff that Jack has written. So what <laughs> I've done is I've filleted all my chapters filleted your... out of the book and had them specially bound for you. <laughs> You're such a <laughs> in, a, in a book which I've called Me. <laughs> You're um, <laughs> And um, which I'd like you to have with I my will be compliments. I'm absolutely thrilled. Thank when you very you... much. As people get older, they take different steps to ease the impact of the passage of time on their looks. Some people grow a beard. Others, like my father, need something a little more drastic. I took him to investigate one of those options. I booked an appointment with one of London's top plastic surgeons. <laughs> Here's how it went down. What's the name of our general practitioner? I don't know. You're the one who's brought me here. I mean, I don't know what we're doing here. I'm very upset that Jack thinks that I need to have anything done to my face. I think my face, for, for a more mature man, is almost perfection. Do you drink alcohol? Well, of course I am. That's a bloody stupid question. Yeah, but if you, take, if you drink and you do prescription drugs, you'll end up like Kerry Butona on this morning. Do you want that? I don't know who she is. Are you going to be honest with the drink one? Well, I put one unit a day. One so unit a day? Yeah. A unit is not a bottle of red wine. Well, why should I tell the man how much I drink? Because he's your doctor. He's not your He's not my doctor. I've never met the man. I'll put three. <coughs> Have I ever had a facial herpes infection? I mean, this is getting really personal. Have you? Well, I think there was that time in Greece. Oh, God, you I, did, I, I, did. I didn't want to hear that shit. He didn't seem to be taking the medical questionnaire seriously and was definitely answering some of the questions incorrectly. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming along. How can I help you? Basically, my father's looking a bit old in the face area, so I thought we could maybe talk about getting a kind of MOT done on that. When you said MOT, could, could you sort of specify a bit more? Well, I don't know, I was just thinking his face at rest looks like he's just smelt a bad fart all the time. Ridiculous. It's Jack that I'm worried about. I mean, when you think he's only just 25, I mean, when he gets to my age, God knows what he's going to look like. Patrick, tell it to me straight. Is this what I've got to look forward to? You know, that depends very much on how you lead your lifestyle. The ageing process is very complex. <laughs> What I'd like to do is just illustrate some of the areas that I think that we can improve upon. So, let's start with the eyelids. Patrick was doing all of his, you know, pen shit on my dad. And then I noticed there was one part of the face that I think he'd carelessly overlooked. Yeah. Can yeah. I suggest as well, just if you don't mind, Daddy, if you took out some of the skin here and just thinned that area and then pulled it in a bit there, you might get a more youthful kind of mouth area. Yeah, no, I, I think that's probably not a good idea. Um, it, it's not really a conventional approach, and I don't think it's going to contribute to, to Michael's overall Look. rejuvenation. No, I don't think so. I think we've probably done the, enough of this now, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Um, so, Patrick, can you work out some sort of price for this? Uh, I'll get that information, and then I'll, I'll get back to you. Great, thanks. Great, thanks. Okay, thanks. 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 OK, gents, you'd be looking at something like this, for all of it's included. Uh, thanks, yeah. Oh, shit. Total waste of time. Complete con artist. Taxi! Uh, maybe don't put your arm up like that. <laughs> Now it's time for my next guest, the greatest actor of his generation. 
His performances are so delicate, they come with a sign saying handle with care. His range is so broad that when it travels on a plane, it requires two tickets. And his delivery is so poetic that it has won a Nobel Prize for literature. Please welcome acting deus, Dame Danny Dyer. <laughs> sure about this. I mean, this is very, very surreal. Have your paths ever crossed before? No. No, no this no. is a rare opportunity. Don't lie. I was seeing Dan Stringfellas once. <laughs> <laughs> out of his nut, he was. Out of his <laughs> nut. <laughs> um, Danny, you're a very busy man, so we very much appreciate you coming on the show. I'm very excited to have the two hardest men on television on the same sofa tonight. Um, and my dad, who's not hard, but then a lot of men his age suffer from that kind of a problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> Now, we're going to talk about your film. You've got a new film out, Vendetta. Vendetta. Like many of your films, it is a Regency comedy. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's not, is it? It's like a revenge film. It's a vigilante movie. It's like a remake of Death Wish. Sure. It sort of raises the question of if you had, you know, uh, your parents horrifically murdered, taken away from you, you know, someone you love and cherish, and you was a highly trained killer, SAS, me, yeah. and they get away with it, would you take the law into your own hands? Because I know I fucking would. I don't know about you, Paxman. I think you're little else. I think if people took my father away... <laughs> <laughs> um, we, have, um, we have a clip um, of Vendetta. Whack it on. That's how you tee up a clip. Whack it on. You know Jimmy Vickers, don't you? Yeah. You know what I did to his mum and dad? Jimmy, you know, when they told me what happened, uh, I couldn't believe it. There's nothing to stop them doing it again. It's me. He'll finish these guys and then... he'll vanish. It's SAS. It's a problem you do not want on your streets. Let me go, man, please! If you want to take a stand, you've got to be tall. Taller than you've ever been. There's some quite violent interrogation um, scenes in the, in the film. Talk us through some of the stuff that you... Well, the, the, my job uh, in the SAS is that I'm an uh, interrogator, so that's my speciality, so I come up with the most creative deaths. Um, I get them back one by one. There's five of these hoodies, so they all get it differently. Um, I think my favourite one is probably the cement down the throat. That's a good one. Oh. Well, no, listen, he's a wrong one, this kid. I mean, don't feel for him. <laughs> Um, but, but, but I sort of capture them, I tie them up, they sort of come round tied to a chair and I have a little speech to them to explain to them who I am and why they're there. Yeah. Very calm, very nice. Yeah. And then I do something horrific to them, so... And at one point someone makes a glib remark about your beard and you call them trivial. There's everything <laughs> there that you do. And your, your daughter's in the film. Yeah, she's in it. She wants to be an actor. It's a tough job. It's a lot of rejection and heartbreak and, you know, she's a teenage girl, so she, she's... You know, she doesn't take it too well, she doesn't get the part. So none of us do, you know. It's like yeah. for every one part I get, I lose out on 20, and it's and it hurts, but you've got to be more determined, so... Are you a protective father? To yes, your... yes, of course I am. If, who if who she... isn't? If she... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> if she brings back um, a boyfriend, what you like with a boyfriend, I'd be quite scared to meet Danny Dyer. Listen, I'm sweet with him. As long as a tear never drops from her fucking eye, <laughs> we're going to be good friends. And so, you, you just say that to him and it's Well, just, no, he knows it. I can, do, I can do it in a look. So you say I came home and I was, um... Right, OK, so you walked in, I'll just be like... With right, your daughter, right. you so I'm blank straight away, I'm blanking you, I'm looking at the telly, and I'll just go... <laughs> oh, dear God, that is and quite... And then pipe away again. So it's like a little pipe. It's a little pipe. A pipe, which is a look. Yeah, and then... And then look away. And then I know... And then have another look, right? Yeah. And then say fuck all to him, do you know what I mean? So <laughs> he knows. And he knows in that moment that if and, 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 and then he'll, and then maybe he'll go to take his coat off and I'll give him another little look. He'll go, don't take your coat off. Don't take your coat off. Don't take your coat off. What the fuck do you think you are? Taking your coat off in my house? Is your house is your house very cold? It's freezing. <laughs> if you'd misbehave, Jack, and you came home, which of these two fathers would you be most scared of? Well, that's the thing. I think Jeremy would be more 
psychological torment, and you'd, you'd break me down yeah. gradually. And he'd just break you. <laughs> It'd just be a yeah, simple... There'd be no dialogue for me, no, there'd be no... <laughs> Be none of that, no. Yeah, just a quick note. I like that. He's getting into it now, yeah. Sid. <laughs> in fact, you work very well as a kind of good cop, bad cop in a household. Who's the good cop? OK, OK. <laughs> bad cop, naughty cop. <laughs> <laughs> You've had it really easy with me. I mean, have I, wouldn't, have, have I ever nutted you? <laughs> <laughs> right. I wouldn't even know what it was or what it meant. You don't know what... You must know what nutting is. Well, when I was a boy, it was something quite different. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I, I, I'm going to talk to you about um, EastEnders. Everyone uh, who is a fan of EastEnders is very excited that you um, are joining the show. Yeah. So talk me through it. You get a call um, yeah. on the dog and bone yeah. from your agent. On the old dog. On the old dog. Uh... Could you Adam and Eve it? <laughs> Did you run no. straight up the apples and pears to tell your trouble and strife, or was it down the rubber dub dub yeah. to have a few pig's ears with your china plates? That's mates. Well done. <laughs> it's eloquently delivered, that was. Fluent in Cockney. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, no, it was a, a moment for me. I, I, I think I was inevitably going to go there. I think it was. You know, inevitable, really. Um, Jeremy, do, are you a fan of EastEnders? Do you watch the show? Uh, I have seen it. But I, don't, I'm not a, I can't count myself as a regular viewer, no. M more the, Emmerdale. The people seem so <laughs> aggressive in it, don't they? Well, Danny's clearly going to lighten it up. <laughs> the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh once made to go around the set of EastEnders, and uh, Prince Philip is said to have remarked to the producer, he said, I, I don't really understand you, I mean, you're, you're Cockney, he's a cheery chappy, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get it at all. Well, because he felt that they were too aggressive on the show. Yes. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm honoured, it's an honour, to be fair. And, and, and oh, I'm, I'm coming not, in, sir, I'm, I'm coming in and, uh, good. I'm coming in and, um, uh, taking over the Vic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness, we're going to have a tear up, me and Paxman. <laughs> <laughs> And that's telly, isn't it? Yeah, that would be telly if you two had a full-on fight um, and Paxman nutted you on your pipe. <laughs> <laughs> and then the old man sticks the boot in, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, now, Danny, Danny, you say you're very excited to be in EastEnders. <laughs> Yet in an interview in 2009, you said you would only join the show when you're fat, bald and 50. I don't even remember saying that, though. I don't remember saying that. I've said so many stupid things. Are there any um, storyline exclusives that you can give us about EastEnders? Because I'm sure the fans well, tuning in will be very excited. You know that, you know, I do like to speak my mind, to be honest, but uh, my hands are tired. I just, I can't really tell you, really. You will be surprised, though, at my character. It's not obvious. I like my cockney and all that. But, like, I'm not what you think I'm going to be. Jeremy, um, he seems to be evading the question. <laughs> How would you suggest that I get the information out of Mr Dyer? It's probably not even been written yet, has it? I mean, your character's been sketched out, but all the storylines there. Yeah, you, you shoot 12 Where episodes you... at a time. Yeah, you're, you... three, you're three months in advance. Oh, so. really? So, so he does already ha filmed some of it? Is he trying to get the thing out of me now, is he? Is yeah. this a move? No, I'm not... you've already filmed some of it. I've been, yeah, I've been doing it for a month, yeah. Mm. yeah. So how... And we'll be surprised? Yes. What aspect will surprise Will you watch it? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like... Yeah, I'm not fucking stupid. I don't know what you I'm all over this. I'm all over it. Yeah. Um, I'll leave you through to exchange details. I'm sure you'll be meeting up after the show. Yeah, yeah, we'll swap digits. We'll swap digits. Swap digits. Digits? No, no, no. Numbers. Numbers. <laughs> <laughs> No. Well, things were looking up there for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a big round of applause to both of my wonderful guests here. <laughs> uh, this has been Backtrack. Join me next week with my guest Gary Lineker and the cast of Geordie Shaw. Good night. And Jack and his dad are back next Wednesday at 10.30. And your tweets is anyone else watching Backchat and toning their abs from laughter. While Shelby says, wetting myself at Backchat, thought Jack Whitehall was funny, his dad is another level. And loads of you, including Emma, reckon Paxman got hot. Get in touch with us via the BBC3 Facebook, Twitter or email.